What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So SketchUp 2023 has been released. Let's take a look at some of the new features contained inside of this new release. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, I will link to the release notes in the notes down below so that you can see the detailed notes on everything that's been changed in this newest version. But let's take a look at some of the new features. So one of the biggest new features is the ability to import Revit projects into your SketchUp models. I think this is something that people have been waiting for for a long time, um, especially if you work a lot with Revit um, or you get a lot of Revit files, but you want to navigate them inside of SketchUp. So probably the biggest thing that you should note about this though, is this feature is only contained inside of the studio version of SketchUp not within the pro version of SketchUp. That's a little bit of an odd decision to me because the studio version also comes with a V-Ray license, which you might or might not use, as well as a Scan Essentials license. Both are tools that you may or may not use. So it's a little odd to me to place the limitation of only being able to import Revit files with this studio version that comes with those other things that you might or might not need. Um, so like I said, a little bit of a strange decision to me, but it is something to be aware of if you are looking for that Revit import, this could still be cheaper than having to maintain a Revit license or something like that. But let's go ahead and import a Revit file and take a look at how this works. So the way this works is you're going to do a file import and you can use the drop down and you can select the option for Revit files. And so when you select a Revit file, you can go find a Revit file. So in this case, this is one of the basic sample projects that you can get from Autodesk. But if I click on import, what this is going to do is it's going to take all of those Revit elements and it's going to convert them, I believe, to groups inside of SketchUp. Um, and what this is going to give you the ability to do is it's also going to bring those in tagged so that you can toggle them on and off. All right. And so once you're done with that, it's going to pop up this little window right here. And when you click on close, it's going to finish the import. So now I've got this Revit project that I've been able to import directly into SketchUp. And so if we take a look at this and let's go ahead and let's go and open up the outliner. So I'm gonna open up the outliner right here. And if I look at this, notice how all of my different Revit elements are in here. But one of the cool things about this is these also got brought in with tags associated with them. So for example, if I wanted to toggle off the plantings, I could do that right here. I could toggle off the furniture systems or the furniture, as well as things like your curtain wall panels or other things like that. Or notice how these got brought in as components. So for example, I have four of these windows in my model and they have information about the windows brought into the definition right here. So if I click on this wall, right, notice how I can get that same thing. So it's going to give me information about the wall. So I, I have no idea. You're probably better scheduling these things in Revit to get data out of them if you're trying to do quantification, but this does bring them in and retain those as groups so that you can see information about them as well as toggling them on and off. So this could be a really valuable way to bring Revit files into SketchUp. And I think it's something we've been waiting for for a long time. All right. So next up, if you remember, SketchUp has had a flip tool for a while. I've never actually used it in my videos or I rarely have used it in my videos because it wasn't really very precise, right? Like you would ask for to flip along. So you would right click on something and look for flip along and then it would tell you to flip along the red, green, or blue axes. I was always guessing the axes wrong. What SketchUp has done is they've replaced that with a flip tool. So the way the flip tool works is you can click on an object and then click on the option for flip. And when you do that, it's going to give you these different colored axes that you can click on in order to flip an object. So now I can see visually when an object flips like this, I can see the axis that it's going to flip along. Now note that there's a couple options down at the bottom. Um, the first is the ability to flip about a plane using the arrow keys. So I can tap the up, left, and right buttons in order to flip this object inside of SketchUp. Um, there's also an option here for um, flip copy. So if you tap control and then do this, it's going to make a copy of the object in here. So it's probably better if I do that in a vertical situation. Honestly, the way this is set up, I can't really think of a reason why I would use the copy mode, um, but the flip option is really helpful. Um, one other thing to note is currently this is flipping along the local axis. So what that means is that means that every one of these objects has its own set of axes. And so that's dictating the direction along which things flip. However, if I was to activate the flip tool like this, 
and then I was to tap the Alt key. Notice how now that flip direction is set by the global axes rather than the local. So um, if you ever need to flip along those axes, you can do that. Or if this is ever messed up and it's not aligned with your object axes, you can tap the Alt key in order to align it with your local axes. So I'm sure there's going to be questions about this, so I wanna make sure that I cover it. Um, they did note that their large model saving is a lot more efficient. So saving your big models is going to be more efficient um, because they're using multi-threading technology in order to do that. Now, one thing to note is the only thing that is multi-threaded is the saving itself. So this doesn't mean that the actual work inside of the model is using multiple cores, um, but instead just that the saving is using multiple cores. So if you do hear that there is multi-threading in 2023, there is, but it's not for the modeling, it's for the saving. All right, so next up, we've got a new feature called overlays. And I think this one you're gonna start seeing being a lot more interesting with different extensions right now. I'm not even 100% sure I understand all of the ramifications for this one. Basically what this is, is there's now the new ability um, in order for extensions to persist or to keep working while you're using native SketchUp tools. So what that means is that means that your extensions can kind of work in the background and look at objects, think about objects, or do whatever it is that they do um, while you're working with native tools. So um, there's only a couple of them right now. Um, you can look under this link right here. There's only a couple of them that currently have this ability, though I would expect more to be added in here. But like Solid Inspector, for example, um, what we need to do is we need to go to Window, Default Tray, and we need to toggle Overlays On. So notice how right here this gives us the ability to toggle Overlays On. Well, what that means is Solid Inspector is going to look at this object and it's going to give us information about what is solid and what isn't, right? So if I check this box, right here, notice how these turn red. What that means is that means that I can click in here and I can see that these are red even as I use SketchUp in order to work on them. And so what that means, and I'm going to hold shift in order to hide these, is this means that this can analyze these objects and show me what's red while I'm actually working right here. So notice what I was able to do is I was able to fix those while Solid Inspector was still working. So I could see them live instead of having to rerun Solid Inspector every time I made a change. This I think has some really interesting possibilities for the future. I'm really excited to see what extension developers are gonna be able to do with it. Um, note that there is a new extension called Annotations that's in here. Um, it's in the extension warehouse and you can download it. And what it does is it allows us to add annotations to currently active scenes. So if I click in here, notice how it tells me I need to enable that annotations overlay. If I toggle that on, then I run this, this allows me to annotate over top of the scene. And then if I add a new scene, um, this is going to look a little bit different. So. If I click in here, notice how my scene one with the annotations toggled on is going to show me that annotation. My scene two isn't. So this allows you to annotate those different scenes. You can also draw 3D annotations in here like this. And again, they're just associated with this scene right here. And if you wanna to toggle them off, you can click on this button right here in order to toggle them off. So I think these are going to be really interesting in the future. So one other thing, and I'm not really sure why they did this, but if you look at SketchUp 2022, notice how the scene tabs are a lot smaller, but in 2023, the scene tabs are a lot bigger. Um, I'm not really sure why they did that because I feel like these take up more room now and it feels like you're not gonna be able to fit as many scenes. So I, I suppose they look a little bit cleaner, um, I, I guess, depending on the way that you look at that, but they have changed the way that the scene tabs look in here, um, but I'm not 100% sure if I like that change or not. All right, so next up, we've also got some different modeling updates. Um, so one of the things that they've added is, let's say that I was to add a circle like this. I'm gonna go ahead and explode it as a curve. I'm gonna push pull it up. So you might've remembered that we've used the extension selection toys a lot in the past um, in order to select only edges or faces. And that's now been added as a native SketchUp function. So if we look at this tool and I right click on it, notice how under the select option, we now have the option in here to deselect edges or deselect faces. So in this case, if I was to deselect the edges, notice how I only have the faces in here. I could delete them out like this. So 
this does give us the ability to now natively deselect edges or faces, which um, I, I do think is a good thing to have as a part of the native tool set instead of you having to install an extension. I haven't checked to see if this got added to the uh, to the free online version yet, but um, that could definitely be a notable addition um, because you can't use extensions in the online version. So in addition, they've also updated the ability or they've improved the eraser sensitivity. If we look at something like this in SketchUp 2022 and I drag across it, notice how if I drag across really fast, it's not picking up all of those edges, right? It's only picking up some of them if we go really fast. However, if I do that in this new version, notice how it much more accurately picks up those edges right here. So it doesn't matter how fast you drag, it's going to erase everything you drag over. So that should make erasing a lot faster. And so another feature is if you've ever adjusted your object axes before, you know that you have to come in here, you need to click, and then you need to click and then set different directions in order to do this. There's just a lot of clicks um, that it takes in order to um, set your object axes like this. However, if you just wanna set those really fast and they align with your model axes like this, all you have to do is just activate the axis tool, click in here, and then just double click like this. And so if you just wanna move your axes around and you don't wanna worry about the directions too much, so let's say for example that I had them facing this way but I wanted them up here, all I would have to do is just click and then double click. So if you're not changing the orientation of your axes and you just wanna double click, this is a fast, easy way to do that. So the freehand tool now has a new function where you know, if you draw in a space like this, with the freehand tool, you can do a control plus or a control minus in order to increase or decrease the number of segments in here. So um, this is going to allow you to have a little bit more control over the geometry that's created. Now, what I wish that they would add to the freehand tool is kind of a smoothing function, but having the control plus and control minus in order to add those additional segments does give you the ability to adjust the amount of geometry that's created inside of your model. Now, one thing to note about that is you don't really have control over that, or you can't really do anything with that unless you explode this as a curve, but then those segments are gonna be in here based on the control plus the control minus that you used um, in order to set the number of segments. All right, so there has been some standardization of the measurements input for the three-point drawing tools. So specifically the two-point arc, the three-point arc, and the rotated rectangle. Basically what this means is this uh, allows you to still enter values in the measurement box once something has been placed. So um, th this one's a little weird to me. Because, so you could already, if you had an arc, and then you typed in a value, you could type in new values like this, but in some situations, like a box, so if I was to draw an arc across this corner right here, I couldn't come back in here and type in a new radius, right? It was just done. Well, now we've got the ability, if we were to draw an arc across this corner, for example, notice how if I type in a new value, this is going to stay active, giving you the ability to make these adjustments live as long as you don't click off of the tool. So now if you go back and you click off the tool, right, then you don't have that ability anymore. But this does give you the ability to make some live adjustments here where you couldn't before. All right, so we do also have some changes to layout. So for example, you can now manage your DWG files as references. So basically you just manage those exactly like you would an inserted SketchUp file. I have not tested much of the layout changes yet. I'm kind of honestly waiting for uh, Michael Brightman's review because Michael is a uh, very layout focused and he gets very in depth on this. So I'm interested to see what he has to say about these features. But you do have the ability to import a DWG as a model reference. All right, so next up, we've got an adjustment to the rotation tool inside of layout. So the way that this works currently is you can drag this little box right to wherever you want, and then you can use this to rotate based on that point. Well, what this does is this gives us the ability to also set the zero rotation. So let's say, for example, that I wanted this over here. What I can do is I can hold shift and I can move this up until it's straight up and down and then let up. Well, notice how now the zero rotation is right here and we can set the direction that this rotates or the angle that this rotates relative to that new direction. So that is an improvement of the rotation tool inside of layout. So if you do work with the dashed lines, they've added the ability to reset 
the dashes for um, all the different objects inside of SketchUp. So if you need to go back through and reset things, um, you can just click the little drop down and click on one of the reset options right here. And so they have made some changes to the way that the auto text works, um, giving you some additional control over whether things are per page or per document in the document setup, as well as some changes to um, the pan tool is now the default tool um, in the edit 3D view. And they fine tune the preserve scale on resize option. So I haven't tested this one. Um, these seem like minor usability changes. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in the way that you use layout. So for me, the Revit import and the flip tool I think are both useful additions. Um, I am glad to see them in here. There are some other things obviously that I would still like to see added to SketchUp, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new release? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.